Greetings fellow humans, this is episode 8 of my hobby quadcast. I will be showing you here how I design a guitar, and uh, which is something I haven't done for a few months at this point, possibly even over a year. So uh, there will be mistakes, which is part of the fun. Uh, this video is going to be in real time, so uh, while I won't be wasting time, I, I, I do want to show you like realistically how long it takes. And uh, to make the game even harder for myself, I'm going to design a kind of guitar that, as far as I'm aware, has never existed before. So uh, let's get into it. So what we're looking at here is how my CAD program boots up. Um, and my, my convention is that the front of the guitar is facing the top of the view in the, um, in the, uh, in the CAD workspace. So first thing I like to do is pull in, um, a load of parts that I am going to, uh, build the guitar around effectively. So uh, I'm going to need a neck. This is um, this is a part which if you erase that means you can put a Telecaster neck with uh, ultra Telecaster uh, pattern of holes into the guitar and attach it using recessed ferrules, which is how I like to do it. Um, and then I'm going to want this guitar to have two humbucker pickups. And so these are the material we need to delete in order to have fit two humbucker pickups. That doesn't look quite right. Curious. Uh, anyway, we'll fix that in a moment. And then we need a bridge. So let's stick the tooling for that in. So, so far we're, we're looking at a little bit of a weird, um, thing because these are, these are what you erase from the guitar in order to, uh, have it um, but work, but let me let me just stick some of the corresponding positive parts in so that could be a part you have. Uh, I actually don't want that one. Let's let's though put in. that for example and cool and why not okay so we're going to build the guitar around these parts these positive parts so I've just turned those so So these guys are here, the, the pickups and the bridge model as a visual representation of components I can buy off the shelf uh, and fit to a guitar. So these are um, not super high fidelity models. If you were to try and construct something from these, it wouldn't necessarily work great. And then these parts are holes that need to exist for those parts to be fitted to it. So it'll become more clear as we go along what the point of all that was. So for now, I'm going to turn those guys off and we're going to draw, I'm going to draw the outline of the guitar I'm going to use. So we will create a sketch there now 
I want to know where. Actually, no, oh, I want to know where that's going to be. I want to know where that part. Oh. What have I done there? Okay. Okay, let's start that sketch again because I got confused why by talking, which is a common problem I see in people trying to do this kind of video. Okay, so we're in sketch mode. We need to know where some of these physical things are going to be. So um, let's just import these uh, points into our model and um, take that surface as well. Okay, now to um, make things a bit more easy to see, I'll turn off all of the stuff that's not the current sketch. Um, so now we know where the bridge is going to sit on the guitar body, we know where the neck's going to be, and this is the outer limit of where the humbucker things are going to be. So let's put in a, a, a basic construction rectangle to start us off, and then um, we're going to constrain that in a few ways. So we don't need any we don't have any requirement for the area behind this line to be flat um, or even exist. Let me just remove that though, because I'm going to give us a bit of margin for error of um, three millimeter. Okay, and then we obviously are going to need the uh, area, some material margin either side of the pickups or it won't hold together so let's do that okay so now our, now our sketch is fully constrained and, and if we if we made an electric guitar that was just this boring rectangular shape um it would have enough material to retain and support the neck here it would have enough material probably to uh, retain and support the pickups and the bridge so we could we could build a thing that's this boring rectangle but we actually aren't wanting to do that obviously so let's grab our line tool and start drawing more of a realistic uh guitar shape so actually I'm going to cancel out of that. We will use a splined line. So let's go onwards out this way a bit. And and then back to, let's see. Yeah. So something like that is a shape we could make. Now I'm going to mess with these uh, spline points to get the actual shape I was after. Um, so actually maybe we'll delete that one. Maybe I did not want to move that that way. Want that perfect point to be why have we hmm. 
Okay. No. I don't, I'm not enjoying that itself and wants to rotate the whole thing and I don't understand the um, rotation point it's picking. Anyway, okay. So that's, if we, if we look at um, the shape I've drawn there, we've got at least the clearance we were aiming for around the around the uh, pickups and there's area for the bridge to be and we've got enough you know probably enough space here to put some controls in um we will come back and and do that later um all right so i just really want that line to be how I want it to be. Arr. Yep, okay. So for now, let's say we're done there. Now, um, I'm gonna turn on these parts again, and we'll use No, we won't. Now we will go sorry, back into the sketch tool and try to understand why I don't have a solid line. And it's because no, you not want that fixed, right? So I need to say that this point hits there. And then I also want to say, I want to bring in the center of this um, support line. And then I want to move that along there and say let's say that we should have eight millimeters there Actually, no. Let's see. So we should have eight millimeters that way. Okay, so you can see this has gone blue. That's uh, good in this case. So what we're going to use is the extrude tool and we are going to um, take this whole outline of the guitar, including the all these holes, which I now regret um, projecting in the way that I did. And we're going to um, to object. We're going to take them that far. So let's say let's find out. Um, all right. Take where away that is. Okay. Thank you. 
So this is now our outlined of outline of a guitar and um it's 40 millimeters front to back at its thickest so if we were to fabricate this shape somehow and then route out things we could make a guitar of this shape but uh, because we're in digital domain what we're going to do is um digitally route them so we we have our um, guitar model already, and we're going to say now we want to remove these parts from it. So, cut. And, okay. So now turn the guitar body back on, turn those tool visibilities off. So now we have the shape of a guitar with, or with the parts we don't need or parts we explicitly don't want removed. So now let's go tidy up this um, area here. I just want to be very clear to say at this point, I am not saying that this is how you should <laughs> design a guitar. I'm saying for the purposes of showing you the approximate process this is not ludicrously far off what i would actually do so um let's take that away and again we're going to extrude that but this time we'll take it that way and um there we are so now that's a bit more um you know stylish around the back of the neck it will it will slightly clear your fingers as you're trying to play up there um i said i would fix these uh tooling and i will do it properly later but what i'm going to do for now is uh just extend these holes manually rather than fix the tool, because I don't really want to show you tool making. Okay, so this is this is still the guitar body, um, but what we've got is also um, there we go. So we've got an idea of what it might look like. Now, uh, I also like to um, set the physical material up and um, and the reason I like to do that is we can take this and go to the render tab pose it, have it uh, ray traced and get a moderately accurate idea of if we were to actually build this, what would it really look like? Um, and I have found this useful uh, as a design tool. I'm not going to show you any more of this, uh, any, this page again, I, I expect. I just wanted to show you you know, this is how I do it in, uh, right, anyway, so I said I was going to design a kind of guitar I've not tried to design. So this is, um, 
the idea of this is to try and design a guitar that would be more pleasant for women to use. So normal guitar has a sort of small protrusion here and then a cutaway. And that um, protrusion there pokes women in the left breast if they try and play the guitar with the same pose as a, a man can comfortably play the guitar. So the idea with this shape here, weird as it looks, is that this will be entirely below um, rather than poking into the left breast, it will extend out a lot further so it won't be trapping the uh, left breast with the between the strap and the horn. And we still need something up here um, to stop accidentally muting the low E string. So let's um, make sure we are, let's make sure we've got enough there by adding a sort of anti-muting shelf. Let's, so, um, I think we need to be concerned from about here. Maybe here. And that's probably an okay shape actually. And this doesn't need to stick out too far. Let's say that will do. And then let's make everything, well, we will sort out the uh, corners of everything later, um, but that is important to do, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to take that point away and replace it with a straight line. Uh, because I don't want to interfere with the um, the neck to hit this at all. Um, and then let me edit this point a bit. That's probably more like it. Oops. Okay, so now let's add some basic controls and um, away we go. Let me just see if I've got any tools for controls all ready to go. Doesn't look like it, so we don't need this panel anymore. Okay. I'll turn these off because I don't need to see those at the moment. Um, actually, I will leave the bridge on because I, I personally like the volume control about in line with the front of the bridge and so it's helpful to, um, to have that. So let's say Let's say we're going to do two knobs and a select a switch. And um, we'll project that as well. And now we can turn off all of these guys. Okay. Um, So we'll make a line there, make a line there, there, there. These are all uh, construction lines. And then 
I can say I'll have that in line with the center. I can say let's have about five centimeters between controls. That way seems okay. We'll make this a um, a right angle and in the middle of that so it's going to look moderately and if I make I mean you can't if I make that a 50 as well then probably just too much that's probably not enough Okay, so, um, and let's dimension that as 25. And then let's fix that angle as 120. Okay, so now we just need to make holes for the, um, actually, I'll do it using the hole to hold tool. So it just mark with proper points the center of the control things and uh, finish the sketch. Right, I'll turn the guitar body back on and we use the hole tool. So don't be overly alarmed. All right. want eight millimeter hole and we want it all the way and uh that'll do so that that's the holes we need on the front of the guitar to support the controls but obviously we also need a um space inside for all the electronics and other gizmos so let us um create a sketch on the back side project those three circles um, now we don't need to know about the body anymore I will turn these to uh, construction lines rather than solid and we're going to again make a sort of Basic blobby loopy thing. Now, the other, we'll deal with that other problem that's probably obvious to any of you who've used an electric guitar in a moment. Um, okay. And then we will turn the guitar body back on. Doesn't look like there's going to be any clearance problem there. And we will leave five millimeters of thickness to support the front. And let's just inspect that measure that we've done that correctly. Yeah, five millimeter dif distance. So this can be where the that can definitely be where the um, uh, be enough space for the control cavity. So let us now do the complicated bits of machining. So um, we need a way to get the wiring from these pickups through to that control area. Um, so I'm just going to create a point here. And 
So this is where we start to get into question of how you're going to actually manufacture this becoming important. Um, so if we're going to uh, fabricate this by CNC machining something, we need to make sure that whatever we ask to do can be CNC machined. If we're going to create this by 3D printing, we have to make sure it can be 3D printed. If we're going to create it manually, we have to make sure it can be created manually. So one of the ways, um, if you're doing it manually, what you might do here is um, drill all the way through from this part behind the neck through that through this wall into this cavity here so that will all be hidden and you run the wires from this pickup through to this pickups hole and then you're going to drill through this angle here into your control cavity and then you're done um, for the pickup part if we were seeing wanting to cnc mill all of this we would decide we might decide we're going to have a uh, a sort of pit guard plate over this area and then we can just mill a channel through the top of the guitar we might decide we're going to have a we're ha happier to have a control channel behind and then we would mill it through from the back or we might uh, if we've got a multi-axis thing again use some kind of drilling operation to to create the uh, channel or we might decide we're going to use a mixed construction method and um, and we will um, yeah we will mill ev uh, everything and then drill through here in a sort of manual way but what we're going to do what I'm imagining I will do with this if I was to do anything at all I would 3d print it and so I can make a um, seven by seven millimeter rectangular hole through here. And just have that um, you know, 3D printed in the um, into the model so now now we need to describe the same kind of channel but from the neck pickup through to the control cavity so i'm just doing this by eye at the moment create sketch rectangle A create sketch, yeah, okay, fine. Rectangle. Project as a construction line, that. Okay, fine. Rectangle. So now we can extrude that um, into the control cavity and we can make sure we've extruded it this way as well. And now, there we go, we have a plausible route for our wires to take. We just have to work out how we're going to uh, actually make that later. Now, the final thing we're going to need um, is some kind of way to get the sound out of the guitar. Now, the easy way to do it would have been to have the output jack on the front and... Um, just make it part of the control cavity. D 
didn't ask you to do that and I'm not pleased that you did. Uh, right. But uh, what I'm going to do instead is um, do a more traditional Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a more traditional jack on the outside over here. So how I'm going to do that, and there's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know what it is, is construct a plane and angle to this line. That's about the angle I want. Okay, construct offset plane to bring that out to here, thereabouts. Make a sketch. Now I'm just going to place a point. here that looks like a reasonable place for the um, thing to be I will dimension it in this direction so that it's exactly in the center and why not dimension it in that direction to be okay so now we can create a hole which will need to be, I believe it's 12. Millimeters typically and Plane turned into face at point, okay. Fine, we'll do that. Okay. Create sketch. Project that point. Take off that sketch. And now the whole creation should work. There we go. Okay. So we're going to need a So again, this hole needs to be 12 millimeters on the outside. But in order to um, actually fit the body of the output jack in, we can't have that be only 12 millimeters on the inside. So um, we need to create another hole. which means we need to know where that center point is again. But on another plane, do, 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 right, fine. Oh. So now we need that to be more like 20 millimeter 
hole. And make it flat and we'll extend it to there. So this would be exceptionally difficult to actually build, but it could be done. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it would be a challenge, but uh, it would be possibly quite fun to make it. Okay, so this is now a guitar it's possible to electrically complete and attach a neck to and, and uh, string up, and it would probably, it might well sound okay, but it wouldn't be very comfortable to build. So I'll just uh, bring back the data panel and uh, stick in some of my other tools that I made. Rest. Yep. And so these are not, as you can see, particularly delicate looking <laughs> tools, but what we can do is Uh, let's see what happens if we just incorporate those cuts. So now we've got a really tiny rib cut. And so I think that's not worth doing. And then these uh, slabs here are, from my experimentation, what I found to be pretty good angles to do a... Um, arm relief for playing in the in the, in the you know in the vein that a lot of uh, guitars have so what i'm going to do is um because that rib cut wasn't worth having i'm going to back out even importing it with just undo and then i'm going to put the chamfers back in and then um yeah so that's now you know that should now be moderately ergonomic except for all of these angles are so sharp it would be unpleasant to play but we're going to fix all of those in one shot with the uh fillet tool so Essentially, you're going to select uh, every curve on the or every edge on the guitar on the outside of the guitar. Why are you not training? Never mind. Um, and all of these, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. And that. And that, and then we're going to uh, let's start with let's see if eight will work. It won't, but let's see. Yeah, so let's see if two will work. Yes, it will. So, let's open that up. Did I put that? Yes, I did. So let's see if we go to three, what edges does it have a problem with? They'd usually be highlighted in red, but it can be, and essentially always is a colossal pain in the neck to find. Okay, so that edge, we can't do at three. What if we take it out? I'm gonna suggest it will be Equally problematic. Oh, 
the other end of this. Yeah. Okay. So if we take that out, we go to three millimeters. That's still not a particularly nice chamfer. Let's try eight, which is pretty good. So eight, eight makes things pretty smooth if we if we uh, do that. So cool. And now let's also decide we will worry about these ones that we couldn't do before and we will make these guys too and why can't do two okay what about 1.5 All right, now I am now worried about that edge only or if we no Maybe we don't need to worry about that edge. So from the player's point of view, everything they're going to be touching is smooth and shouldn't hurt them. Let's turn off tangent chaining. Add on Okay, um, that is pretty much what I would do to design a guitar. Um, from here, I would, well, I would also add, uh, I would also add the points and the um, points where I'm going to attach strap buttons, mark them and uh, pre-drill them if it's CNC or... 3D printing, so that would be here and here, but you know, basically the same process as used to put the jack uh, plug hole in. I don't really want to repeat that. And then um, I will just 
stick in these two again and go and do a render of of what we've designed or what I've designed. So yeah, that, that's the process I go through to design a guitar. Um, sort of anyway, like this would be step step one and then step two, you're gonna, I would try to make a, I would print out the uh, plan view of this to see if I can tell whether it would be the right kind of proportions. And then I would start making, I'd make a version of this to see if it works um, in the real world. And then I'd refine the design and make another one if it didn't. That's uh, a process anyway. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Um, I hope it didn't, well, I hope if anything it surprised you by how short it, of the time it took and um, have a great day.